welcome to another week of my allotment. It's only been five days or four days since I posted the last video and today's only going to be a quickie. Um, I just want to show you around some of the crops and answer a couple of questions. Um, I think I've picked the last of the strawberries here today. Um, we've been away for four days with the caravan and I got back today and I've got up here quick to see if anything needed watering and it did. Still haven't had any sufficient rain for a couple of weeks now. So I've given everything a couple of hours of good watering and I'm going to pick some crops now. Um, and I wanted to answer a question from one of the viewers on uh, the garlic spray, which I'll, I'll show you how it's done in a minute. Um, and show you around some of the crops and the significant changes that have happened. So um, without further ado, let's go and do that. Well, apart from a little bit of weeding that's desperately needed, and I'll get around to that this weekend hopefully, I just thought I'd show you the pumpkins, that's Cinderella and Charmont. But these were all very anemic looking just a couple of weeks ago, but because the temperatures have raised, uh, so have the so have my hopes for these plants, and it's all looking very promising, very pleased. A little bit further back, the same can be said of the squashes, the butternuts. Those really did look on their last legs, but I might just get a crop off some of those now. This is the uh, Atlantic giant pumpkin plant that I put in the ground, actually in the compost heap, on my last short video. And that was five days ago. And once I'd put it in and watered it, I gave it a liberal spray of garlic water. And here we are, five days later, it sat there on its own, unprotected, in an old compost heap, which must be full of slugs and snails, and it's not had a nibble out of it. So I'm going to, actually now I look at it, there are some on the edge here, just there, look. However, when I think about all the other plants I've put in the ground, this is a success. I'm going to declare the garlic spray a total success. I've also noticed with those crops that have been uh, eaten by slugs, that once I applied the garlic water, the damage stopped almost overnight and they're recovering. Things like runner beans have started to re-sprout. So I am very pleased with it and happy to declare it a success. Bearing in mind that if it rains or after a week or so, you do have to reapply. But well worth the effort. While we were away in the caravan this weekend, we went to a place I've always wanted to visit, and that was David Austin Roses. Um, it's up in the West Midlands, uh, so it was a bit of a trip. But as we were that way with the caravan, we went up for the day two days ago, and what a place. It's free to enter. Hundreds and hundreds of stunning roses, looked after by experts, uh, bread on site and um, for sale. And we had a wonderful meal up there and a lovely good look round. Uh, and we came back with a couple of specimens for our back garden. Um, but while I was there I took a few video clips and I'll put those in the middle of this just to show you or give you a feel of the place. But you know, for those in the UK I thoroughly recommend it, it's worth a visit. June, July time when everything's in its prime, you must go and see it. It's only two or three acres, but it is absolutely stunning. We're visiting David Austin Roses. This should be quite a trip. We might spend some money. This place is Rose Heaven. Cheryl's picked her favourite and it's called Mini Ha Ha. Oh, 
and the arch is almost bridged. Nice cauliflower and possibly more important than that that is the roots and I want to remind you that I've got club root on this plot well this is uh, I believe it's Clapton I think it's Clapton uh, the brass uh, the club root resistant cauliflower and those roots are excellent. And there's a nice head there of cauliflower for my tea tonight. I'm absolutely over the moon with that. That is a real success. So this uh, club root resistant selection of brassicas that I've grown this year, so far I'm absolutely overwhelmed with. Fantastic. I'm actually getting a crop. I've picked Calabrese and now I've picked my first cauliflower of the year. Wonderful. And the same with the Calabrese, Monclano, Calabrese, Monclano, club root resistant, blimmin' lovely. One thing that's been exceptional this summer so far, and it ain't over yet, is the soft fruit. We've had wonderful soft fruit and it's looking really promising for the next month or two. So I just want to show you around specifically the soft fruit on crop on the plot today. So let's start with strawberries. Probably nearly the last pick but they've been fantastic. So strawberries, let's have a look. Blackberries, gooseberries, raspberries, blueberries, And black currants, last but not least. But boy, do they take some picking. And this goes to show what happens if you go away for a few days with the courgettes. Funny, these are courgette zucchini. One is light, and one is dark. In fact, I've just picked all these within a space of a minute, and I, I think you'd agree, I've got the full spectrum of green there, and it's all courgette zucchini. Don't understand. Answers on a postcard, please. And they're way too big. They really should be the size of a sausage, really. But that's what happens when you go away. Tonight's harvest, going home, couldn't be more happy. Cheryl will be pleased with the blueberries. Well, that's um, just a quick look. Uh, as I said, a quick hop around the site. Um, and I'll do something more extensive at the weekend. But for now, thanks very much for watching. Thanks for subscribing, I do appreciate it. 
um, hit the like button if you can and uh, I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.